ان الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى ما وعلى اما بعد dear brothers and sisters once again welcome to all of you in our series of lectures purification of the heart and the topic which we are going to cover today is al yaqeen wa at tawakkul and of another ibadah of the heart is yaqeen that is the belief faith at tawakkul trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's really really important for us to understand this because all the results in this dunya and akhirah for a believer all the results are based on his yaqeen and tawakkul upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so what happens when there is a yaqeen and tawakkul so that means a human being is having faith in allah in the thing which he have not seen and he is trusting him in what is going to happen and that will be good for him so it's it's all about having faith in unseen al ghaib and it's really important to understand this whole topic and this topic will strengthen our hearts and it will keep us firm on the path of al qalbun salim which we have been talking about almighty <clears throat> allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa may yatawakkal 'ala allah fa huwa hasbuh whoever has trust in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah is enough for him whoever has trust in allah allah is enough for him So the author here he mentioned few of the ayats of the Quran and these ayats are related to some of the historical events happen in Islamic history. So the first one it is about Surah Al-Ahzab the ayah from the Surah Al-Ahzab ayah 22. So what happened in Surah Al-Ahzab there was a battle of Ahzab in Islamic history at the time of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam where the quraish they gathered around makkah not hundreds but in thousands of people over 10000 people from different different tribe they brought and they came with full planning that today we are going to finish the matter of islam 100% So there will be no Islam, there will be no Prophet, there will be no Medina. So they all gathered about around Medina. So at that time, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned about the severeness of that battle, how the Muslims were reacting, and how afraid they was. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala says, "وَإِذَا ذَاقَتِ الْأَبْصَارُ وَبَلَغَتِ الْقُلُوبُ الْحَنَاجِرُ when a person's sight went upside down out of the fear and then he, their hearts came and stuck in the throat out of the fear because all 10000 enemies from different different tribes they all gathered about around medina and they were about to attack and they want to finish the mass must all the muslims all the first establishment of islam allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about that one that hunalik abtuli al mu'minun wa zulzilu zilzalan shadida at that time allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the believers and they were shaken a great shake so here when this happened this is the scenario the background of the battle all of them came allah mentioned about two kind of people the people when this examination happened it divided into two so what was the first category the first category allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa id yaqul al munafiquna wal ladhina fi qulubihim marad when the hypocrites and those in their hearts there is a illness and we are talking about the illness of the heart so those who are munafiq hypocrites 
and those whom their hearts is marad, they said, مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا Whatever Allah and the Messenger has promised, it is nothing but a ghurur, delusion. It is fake. And what was the promise of the Prophet Muhammad to Sahaba? From the first day the Prophet ﷺ's promise is, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تَنْلِكُ الْعَرَبَ وَالْأَجَرِ the Prophet ﷺ said, you say, La ilaha illallah. You believe in the oneness of Almighty Allah without making any partners to Him, without making any sharik to Him. Tamlikul Araba wal Ajam. So if you have your faith as Allah wants you to have faith, then what will happen? You will rule Arab and Ajam both. Arab and non-Arab. This is the promise. This is the promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then uh, uh, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specifically mentioned Kisra, Qaisar, wa Sana'a. This war at that time, Byzantine Empire, Persian Empire. They were the superpowers of the time. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that I can see that we are going to rule all this land. So this is the promise of the Prophet. And all the Ahzab, the tribes gather against Medina to finish it that day. And this is a promise in one hand. And on the face value, you can see all of them are ready to finish you. So at that time, imagine what was the situation of the belief and the faith of the believers and all of them. So the hypocrites and those who in their heart there was an illness, what they said? What the Prophet has promised and Allah promises is nothing but a vain. It is just a delusion that it's nothing. It's, it's nothing, just it is a fake promise. This is one category of the people. And then there was another category of the people. And the other category of the people, they were the believers. Allah says about them, وَلَمَّا رَأَى الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الْأَحْزَابِ قَالُوا هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولَهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ when the believers saw this all, they said, yes, indeed, Allah and the Messenger has promised this, that this is going to happen. And whatever Allah and Messenger has promised Sadaq, it is the truth, that it is going to happen. So what happened? They, when they see these old people, the believers, their faith got higher. Why? Because Allah and Messenger has promised, so we are going to overcome them. So their faith was and tawakkul in Allah were more than the hypocrites and the <coughs> those who had the disease in their heart. Those who had disease in their heart, they didn't have tawakkul in Allah. They didn't have that yaqeen in Allah, in the promise of Allah. So here the point is that whatever the present circumstances are, you always have faith and trust in Allah and His promises. You never see what is happening now. You never see what... So what will happen when you see this and you have full faith in Allah and tawakkul in Allah, then you will overcome it easily. And this is what happened at the time of Battle of al ahzab So then later on, the world have seen that Persian Empire has gone, the Byzantine is gone, and all others they gone. They're all gone. And that was the promise of Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So here, there are some people always in the societies who worship Allah at a corner. As Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ عَلَىٰ حَرْفِ There are some people who worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala at a corner. They believe in Allah, so they want to be part of the Muslim faith. So they are, but just they want to have a small link with Muslims. فَإِنْ أَصَابَهُ خَيْرٌ إِطْمَأَنَّا بِهِ If everything is going smooth, they are fine with it. They are agreed with it. And then, وَإِنْ أَصَابَتْهُ فِتْنَةٌ If the trial comes to them, as the trial came to the people of Hazar, or any other situation, if the trial come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put them in examination, إِنْ قَلَبَ عَلَى وَجْهِهِ he just returns back on his face. He said, oh, no, no, I'm not among them. 
Um, not about just, just he frees, he'll go back. And then, Qasira dunya wal akhirah. Allah says he is the loser of the dunya and akhirah. He lost the dunya and the akhirah. Dalika huwa al khusran al bibrin, and it is the clear loss. So here, just stop for a moment and check ourselves, our iman, and our tawakkul, where it stands. And this happened at the battle of Ahzab. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about that one. But these things happen and the ayats are revealed for some reason. But the ibrah, the lesson is till the day of judgment. So we have to check ourselves where our iman and tawakkul stand. So whatever Allah and the messenger has promised, it is going to happen. Even though the present circumstances shows us it, 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 it far, 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 it, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. But we have to be having that faith and tawakkul. So first faith and then tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what happened? When people have some critics, when they started criticizing Islam or any act of the Islam, they started giving excuses. Sometimes some people, they just simply leave Islam because they were just a little bit connected and they won't. And then sometimes what happens? To prove themselves that they are with the majority or the you know, whatever is trend going on, that part of Islam, they deny about it. That part of Islam, oh no, no, this is... So they started criticizing the Qadr of Allah. They started criticizing one of the actions of Allah. Oh no, for anything, no, no, this hukum was for that time, not for this time. No, the Islamic teachings are till the day of judgment. Till the day of judgment. So here, a human being, he always have to see what is the promise of Allah and the Messenger? And he has to have that tawakkul and the iman in that one. And always we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the dua again. And the dua is, Ya muqallib al qulub sabbit qalbi ala deenik. Wa ya musarif al qulub sabbit qalbi ala ta'atik. Why this is important dua? You can understand this. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put people on a trial, then what happens? People come out and then. Those who are worshipping Allah at a corner, they go. They leave Islam or they deny some part of the Islam or so on and so forth. And then this was the first incident about the Iman and Tawakkul. Let's take another one. We all know the Battle of Uhud. And we know in the Battle of Uhud what happened. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed 70 archers on a mountain. He said the battle is taking place here, the archers in that mountain, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded them, they said, if you see we won the war and we are collecting all the wealth of beauty, booty, and then the enemies are running away and we are chasing them. He said, don't leave your spot. And if you see we lost and they are killing us, don't leave your spot. Your spot is this, stay there. This was the command of the Prophet Muhammad to them. Very strong command. So what happened? The battle started, Muslim won the battle. And they started collecting. So these people got some dispute. Between them, two, two opinions. One of them said, look, Prophet told us, just to emphasize on that, that we have to be here. Now we won. Let's go and we also enjoy collecting the wealth of booty. Those who, those uh, enemies who, whatever they brought, they were leaving and they were running away. So and then catching the uh, those uh, uh, you know f soldiers. So they they started running. So the, some of them said, "Oh no no, don't do that." Prophet said, "Whatever happened, we are not allowed to leave it." And they said, "We are not going to leave it." This was the Prophet ﷺ's command and Sahaba disputed in that one. Some of them left and they went in the battlefield. And the leader of Quraysh at that time, who was he? Khalid, Khalid bin Walid, the soldier of Islam, Asadullah. Later on he embraced Islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, uh, uh, the Prophet ﷺ gave him the great title, Asad, the line of Islam. And there is another, the sword of Islam. So what happened? He looked at that opportunity. And he, they run away 
and he collected those who left and he came from behind and then he attacked Muslims. So on the mountain, how many Muslims were there archers? Only few, handful of them, they left. So they killed all of them and Muslims are busy here co collecting all these and they were unknown. They were, not, they were not prepared that somebody might attack them back. And they attack and subhanAllah, all what they were won in minutes, many Sahaba got martyred. Over 70 Sahaba got martyred. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, one of the worst time in the life of the Prophet وسلم, that the helmet he was wearing, the helmet went inside, the face of the Prophet وسلم, he broke his teeth. All and then many Sahaba to protect the Prophet وسلم, they make a circle around and some of the Sahaba they counted they have taken over 70-80 archers in their body to protect the Prophet Muhammad and one dies and then another is dying and one get martyred and another is dying just to protect the Prophet Muhammad this all happened, this is the background scenario but here to learn thing you understand, you don't understand. Follow the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Stick to it. Stick to it. One dispute leads to lose everything. This is what happened. So this is the scenario. And then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Sahaba, there was a very good communication between them. Uh, Abu Sufyan was the leader at that time and from Muslims, so Abu Sufyan shouted, they were thinking the Prophet had died. They were thinking Abu Bakr and Umar died. So they were shouting from that side, oh, do you have Abu Bakr alive? And nobody was answering. Prophet ﷺ said, don't answer. Then they said, is Muhammad alive? Is this? And they were shouting, they were shouting. So then there was a, stop, so there, there was a time Prophet ﷺ said, answer them back now. So one of the beautiful Communication was, they said, you kill ours, we kill yours. We kill your people and you kill our people. So it's equal now. So Muslims replied, no, 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 it's not equal. Qatlana fil jannah wa qatlakum fil nahr. Subhanallah. Again, yaqeen and tawakkul. What he says? He says, no, our martyrs are in jannah and your dead bodies are in the hellfire. And that shaked them, that shaked them. And then the Prophet ﷺ came back to Medina. And Sahaba, uh, the, the Quraysh went back to Mecca. They were going back. At that time, the news came. And the news was, Abu Sufyan collected all of them back again. And he said, this is the good time to attack Medina now. Because Muslims already have lost so many fighters, has got martyred. So let's gather and go back again to fight another fight straight after Uhud. Straight after Uhud. And the Prophet ﷺ came back. Everybody is sad and sorrow. Many Muslims lost their beloved ones and they are really, really sad. At that time, Allah's Messenger ﷺ told them, Come on, let's gather and go back and fight again. So at that time, what happened? The hypocrites came and they said, this is the second ayah the Mu'allif has mentioned. Subhanallah. What happened? The hypocrites came and they said, oh my God, the people are gathering now to attack you. All the Quraysh are gathering once again to attack you. They all are gathering again. They are preparing for the war. Be afraid of them. Because you just lost. Lost so many fighters, so many soldiers. You lost all the weapons. Now they are gathering. Get afraid of them. Then, So the believer says, no, 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 no. That's really good. Their iman got increased. And they said, وَقَالُوا حَسْبُنَ اللَّهُ وَنِعْمَ الْوَكِيلُ They said, Allah is enough for us and He is the best protector. Allah is enough for us 
and he's the best protector. So they all gathered back, Sahaba, and they left back Medina. They left Medina. So when Abu Sufyan and others heard about that, they, that Muslims also gathered and they are coming to fight back. They said, "Oh, that means Muslims are strong, because we thought we have made so big laws that they will not be able to fight back again." But now they are gathered again and they are coming instead of, and we are more in number. And they just have seen that much loss. But the call of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِلَّهِ وَالرَّسُولِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا سَابَهُمُ الْقَرْحِ لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا مِنْهُمْ وَالتَّقُوا عَجْرٌ عَزِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that those people who accepted the call of Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the hardship fall upon them. And that hardship is the badr, uh, sorry, battle of Uhud. Battle of Uhud, hardship. And then, then Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ مِنْهُمْ وَالتَّقْوَىٰ جُرْنَ عَزِيمٌ Those who did good and fear Allah, there is a great reward for them. <coughs> who are they? Those who gather to fight back as again. And then, الَّذِينَ قَالَ لَهُمُ النَّاسُ إِنَّ النَّاسَ قَدْ جَمَعُوا لَكُمْ And when the people said to them, Oh my God, all these Abu Sufyan's people are gathering, so فَخْشَوْهُمْ Get afraid of them, so all of them said, no. Allah is enough for us. This is the tawakkul upon Allah. Hasbun Allah wa ni'm al wakil. Hasbun Allah wa ni'm. One of the hadiths will come later on. I'll just mention this hadith over here. This hasbun Allah wa ni'm al wakil is a very strong word. Very, very strong word. Whenever you have some situation where it is out of your control and things, say this word. Hasbun Allah wa ni'm al wakil. And it has amazing effect. This shows your faith. This shows your tawakkul upon Allah. Hasbun Allah. You say Allah is enough. Whatever is happening, whatever people are doing to us, Hasbun Allah. They cannot go over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hasbun Allah. He's enough for us. And he's the best protector. And then the hadith is Ibrahim alayhi salatu salam and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, these are the people. They both are the Khalil Allah. They both are the Khalil of Allah. Allah made both of them Khalil. Ibrahim والسلام, when he was getting thrown into the fire, he read this one. Hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did? Allah ordered the fire. Ya na rukuni bardam wa salama. Oh fire, be cool and peaceful for Ibrahim. It's not only cool, if it is cool, so instead of hate he would feel cold. But Allah says, wa salaman, peaceful. So pleasure. So it was full of pleasure to Ibrahim والسلام, even though he was in the fire. So this fire is also the creation of Allah. And it is also obedient to Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth. And then he says to them, come back to us. Come back to us, obedient or disobedient, you have to come back to us. And then earth and the heavens, they said, no, no, we are coming back to you, Allah. Ta'een, worshipping you obedient to you. So similarly, the fire is the, the uh, creation of Allah. Allah says, be cool and it become cool and peaceful for Ibrahim So this hasbun Allah wa ni'mal wakil is very important. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَانْخَلَبُوا بِنِعْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَفَضْلٍ لَمْ يَمْسَسُهُمْ سُمْ And they all returned, the Sahaba who went after the battle of Uhud, again to battlefield, they returned with the fuzz of Allah because there was no fight. But they got the pleasure of Allah. Allah, they got successful in their test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says that إِنَّمَا ذَلِكُمُ الشَّيْطَانِ يُخَوِّفُ أَوْلِيَا فَلَا تَخَافُهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ He is the shaitan who will make you afraid of his friends. Don't fear of shaitan, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is again yaqeen uh, and tawakkul. And Allah says that إِنَّ كَيْدَ الشَّيْطَانِ كَانَ ضَعِيفًا Indeed the tricks of the shaitan are weak. So when there is a yaqeen and tawakkul, this all, what happens, the tricks of the shaitan, they become weak. The last, uh, the, another ayah which is mentioned, there is, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتْ Subhanallah, very strong ayah. And have your tawakkul, trust in Allah, the one who is alive, al-hayy la yamut, who is not going to die. When you have the hay and the so before Allah there is nothing, after Allah there is nothing. He is the first and the last. And everybody other than him is his creation. So everybody will die. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So whoever is there, as powerful as they are, it does not matter. You must have your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they cannot defeat Allah. They cannot fight against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is an, another very strong message. And then Allah mentioned here, Allah doesn't die. Allah doesn't die. So the scholars wrote that whoever go to sleep, they are, you know, sleep is half of the dead. How, okay, the, the, the sister of death is asleep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't even sleep. And all other creation, if you see, they take rest. They take rest. So the one who take rest and the one who die, is he powerful or the one who never go to sleep and who will never die? He's Allah. So have tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, <clears throat> there is a great hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this hadith suits us a lot. The hadith is the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that on the day of judgment there will be some Sahaba coming and they will have Ruhayt with them. Ruhayt is three to ten people. Three to ten people only. Ruhayt it's called. So they will have Ruhayt with them. And there will be some Sahaba, they will have Rajulan or Rajul. They have two or three people or one person with them. Who so the, the messenger came, give da'wah, only one and two person came. And then the Prophet saw a, a huge black cloud of people. Huge, huge. And it was still ufuq to the horizon people. So the Prophet looked at them and he got happy. He said, okay, this is my people. He was thinking, so he was informed, no, no, this is the people of Musa alayhi salatu salam. This is the people of Musa alayhi salatu salam. When it has been said to them, it is the people of Musa alayhi salatu salam. So, the Prophet said, oh, Musa has a big follower. And among all the messengers, other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salatu salam had more followers than anybody else. More acceptance than anybody else. So huge, huge. And then there was another big massive crowd. And then after that there was another big bigger than those two. And then the Prophet sallallahu informed that this is your people. And among that crowd, there will be 70,000 people who will be entering into Jannah without punishment and without accounts. Straight away into the Jannah. In another hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it says each among those seventy thousand people, each of them will take seventy thousand more with him. So seventy thousand multiplied by seventy thousand, that will go into the jannah without hisab, without adab. May Allah subhanahu wa taala count all of us among them. So there was one of the Sahabi. Look how keen they were. So he said, Ukasha bin Muhsin. He said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, please make dua, I will be among them. So the Prophet said, Anta minum. Yes, you are among them. So another said, Me, me as well. So Prophet said, No, Sabaha ka biha ukasha. Ukasha was the first. He didn't say, You are not. He left the, the majal open. He let the door open. Okay, you can try. But Ukasha was the first. So I made dua for him. That's it, finished. And he stopped it. But who are these people who will go? There are four qualities mentioned about them in the hadith. And the four qualities are La yastarqoon, wa la yattaqoon, wa la yattayyaroon, wa ala rabbihim yatawakkaloon. These four qualities. These are the people, la yastarqoon. If there is no need, they don't ask others to do ruqya for them. If there is no need. If there is a need, you can ask. To conclude the whole hadith, the, so they don't ask, okay, I might, somebody might put ayin on me, or somebody might do hasad on me, or some jinn might attack me, so do ruqya on me. You don't ask others. You do yourself, but you don't ask others. This is the first quality. The second quality is, wala yaktawun. There is an illness, there is a treatment of burning. Okay, one of the sahabi. Uh, in one of the battlefield, uh, he got uh, hurt, and then one of the veins started gushing the blood. So the Prophet 
burn some metal and he put on that one and he blocked that vein from leakage of the blood. So th this treatment, unnecessary, they don't ask, okay, can you do this treatment for us? J just unnecessary, people do this, unnecessary to the, make the marks of the tribes and things. So they, they don't do this. And the third one is, they don't become superstitious. And superstitious is, it could be many things. Like for example, Arab has this, in Shawwal, if anybody get married, then that is not good. This marriage will not work. So Aisha used to say, what is wrong with them? The Prophet married me in Shawwal and we made our marriage in Shawwal. So, and I was the most beloved to the Prophet she says. So in Islam, there is no superstition. So there is nothing. All right. And then they have another thing. They used to take a bird before they do anything and they spell and they leave the bird. If bird go on the left, oh, that's bad luck. If it goes, so the, all these gemstones fall in this one. All these gemstones, okay, my, these, my, no. Wala yatatayyirun, they don't do this all. This is the third quality. The first quality, they don't ask unnecessary ruqya, they don't make unnecessary treatment with the fire. And then the third one is, they don't become superstitions. Okay, this is the third one. The fourth one, wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun, and they have full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these will be the people who will enter into Jannatul Firdaus without punishment and without any accounts. Straight away into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count all of us among them. Okay, we talked about Isa, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And then another hadith of the Prophet wasalam, in this regard is <coughs> Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam said if you have trust in Allah, as the trust should be upon Allah, then you will be fed or your means of life will be brought to you as Allah feeds the birds. In the morning, the birds leave the house empty stomach. In the evening, they return full stomach. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned about tawakkul upon Allah. Does the bird has planning what he is going to do, how much he is going to say? No. They go out, they, but they come back full of stomach. If you have tawakkul in Allah, you will have the full stomach. This is what this hadith says. Here, a couple of things. One is tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And second thing is, every single thing on earth, the creation of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed their risk for them. Their risk for them. Allah has appointed. Allah says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِسْقُهَا On the earth, whatever living creation is there, Allah has risk for them, appointed risk. وَيَعْلَمُ مُسْتَقَرَّهَا وَمُسْتَوْدَعَا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows where they spend night, where they go. Allah knows this all. So everybody have the risk, written risk. So here, risk is not in our hand. This comes from Allah. Many people work so hard, they go, don't get it. Many people, they don't work so hard, but they get it. They get more than others. This is the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's wisdom. We don't know about it. Whatever Allah feels better, it happens. And sometimes, based on this one, we accuse and we cry and we uh, accuse our Qadr and we say bad things about Qadr. One of the person, he gave very ex good example to students. He was explaining to the students about the Qadr of Allah. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Hakim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what, what he said. If Allah gives somebody less and somebody more, this is the choice of Allah. You do your best. You do your best. You have full tawakkul in Allah. You put, take all the means to gain it. But whatever you get, you should be happy with that one. For, uh, happy with what Allah has provided you. So he said... He took five, six students and he gave one of them one pound, another ten pound, another hundred pound, another five hundred pound. He said, okay, one week go and he spent. And then next week he called all of them and he had very hot plate. And he said to the five hundred one, okay, come stand on that one and give me the account how you spent this money. And that was the hot plate and he's standing and he's, you know, he's taking long time and he just jump out. And then he started putting water on his feet because it, it burnt him. Then the hundred one was a little bit lesser than him. And a little bit lesser than him. 
And the one pound one was straight away he jumped. He said, oh, I just bought this one for home and he jumped back. At that time, in the first when he was giving, go and spend, the one pound was really upset with the teacher. He said, oh, how come you give me 500 there and only one for me? It's not fair. But after the accounts, he said, oh, thank you very much, teacher. You did give me more money. Otherwise, I had to stand a lot. So this is, you, you don't know, this is just a little example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free from the examples. But this is the risk is belong to Allah. And he gives whoever he wishes. So we have to be pleased with, we should, okay. Another thing is, taking this hadith, people take wrong meaning. And that is, oh, I have tawakkul upon Allah. I don't want to do anything. I have tawakkul upon Allah. I don't want to, I, to do anything. So if Allah has written food in my haqq, it will come to me. Many people say like this, and they don't want to work. And many people, they just stay on the benefits. They don't want to work. They are good. They are healthy. No, whatever is written, I'll get it. That's completely wrong interpretation. If you look at this hadith, whether bird stay at home to get fed? No. Bird get out, take the means. You have to take the means of life. You have to fly. You have to go everywhere, find your food. And then... That is the tawakkul. You go and you will get it. If you don't take the means, it is anti-Islam. You have to take the means to get your food. So this is the meaning of tawakkul is using the means. If you don't use means, that is against the teaching of Islam. So this is what we learn from that. Even the tawakkul means you take the means. Okay. This is another thing. There are two du'as mentioned. And with these du'as we finish today's, uh, uh, today's uh, session. And that is... I think this dua is not in the book, but this is very beautiful dua. Hisnul Muslim, if you have Hisnul Muslim, this dua is there. And many of you might already know this dua. And dua is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said that if you go to your bed, you say, Allahumma aslam to nafsi. O Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I have submitted myself to you. Wa wajhi ilayk, and I have faced my face towards you. Wa fawwahtu amri ilayk, and I have given my matters to you. وَأَلْجَأْتُ ظَهْرِ إِلَيْكَ And also, I am turning back to you. رَغْبَةً وَرَهْبَةً إِلَيْكَ Hoping and very fearful in you. I have full fear and I have hope as well. لَا مَلْجَأَ وَلَا مَنْجَأَ مِنْكَ إِلَّا أَلَيْكَ There is no refuge. There is no refuge and there is no exit except from you. آمَنْتُ بِكِتَابِكَ الَّذِي أَنْسَلْتْ I believe in the book which you have revealed. And in the messenger who you have sent to. Then this is the dua. And then the Prophet said, If you die at that night, you die upon the fitrah. And if you wake up in the morning, you wake up with the goodness. But what is in this dua? Why this is in the bab of tawakkul and iman? Because aman to be ladi anzat, and I believe in the book which you have revealed. So this is the faith. And whatever is in that book promises you have tawakkul in that one. So that's why this dua is eh, and very very beautiful dua. We all should memorize this dua. The last. Dua is when you leave the house. This tawakkul and yaqeen comes. What is the dua of leaving the house? Bismillah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. So Bismillah, in the name of Allah, tawakkaltu ala Allah. I have full trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no might, there is no power except with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the dua the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has taught us. This is a small dua. There is another little bit longer dua. That is, Allahumma inni a'ud bikan adilla aw udalla aw azilla aw uzalla. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I seek your protection that I mislead or I get misled. Or I sleep or I made somebody else sleep. Aw azlima aw yuzla ma'ali. Or I got oppressed or I oppressed somebody else. And then, aw ajhala aw yujhala. Or I became ignorant or somebody else made me ignorant. So this is another dua, uh, just another addition to that one. So this is another 
dua. So this small dua helps you to build the tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we always look after this dua, small, small dua for ourselves and our children as well. We should make sure when they go to bed, we should make sure we read them with them and make them read, repeat after them and give them the meaning. So that will give. Why dua? Why dua? We have to make dua. What is the link of the dua with the heart? We talked about this last in last sessions. What is the link between dua and the heart? Yes, from the illness to the the saqal bun salim. Yes, that's fine. Another thing, between the two fingers of our Rahman, all the hearts. Yes, the flips. Allah subhanahu wa taala flips. So that's why we make dua, lots of dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa taala to flip our heart, to control our heart towards His obedience and and towards uh, the religion. So this is really really important to make the dua all the time because this dua can change everything. And at the end, remember the story of migration of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Abu Bakr Siddiq. They went, they ran away, and they hid themselves in Ghar, Ghar Thaw. They hid, and the Quraysh they followed them, and they came to the entrance of Ghar, and they are just standing on the top, and Abu Bakr Siddiq was Allah Taala and says. O Prophet of Allah, and he's crying, Abu Bakr is crying, out of the fear. O Prophet of Allah, if they look towards their feet, they can see us. If they just look like this, they can see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr, and they are hiding there. So what Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. This is a tawakkul and iman. Don't be sad. Indeed, Allah is with us. Don't be sad. Indeed, Allah is with us, this should be the tawakkul. So, some of the good practices of the heart to keep our heart on the qalbun salim is iman and tawakkul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us tawfiq. Inshallah, tomorrow we'll take some more uh, similar topic uh, which relate to our hearts. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us tawfiq. Jazakumullah uh, khairan. If there is any question, we'll take it. Otherwise, we we'll stop here, what is allowed and what is not allowed for the people of Aitikaf? People are not allowed to be like a jinn, you know. <laughs> I saw him in the morning and they got afraid. SubhanAllah. <coughs> no, that was just a, a joke, okay? I love you for the sake of Allah, brother, mashallah. He's a very beloved brother, mashallah. He brought a lot of his smile in the masjid, alhamdulillah. May Allah give him best reward. And very good question. For the people who are in the Aitikaf, the meaning of the Aitikaf is you disconnect from the world and you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You disconnect from the world and you connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Aitikaf was the ibadah, not only in Islam. Before Islam, even the Quraysh, Mushrikeen, they used to have the Aitikaf. They disconnect themselves from the world and then they just go and sit front of their idols and they worship idols. Devotion. So this is after Islam, the Prophet ﷺ kept the same uh, ibadah, form of the ibadah, itikaf. That you disconnect from the world and you stay for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the beauty of Islam is, Islam is very balanced religion. And all the teachings of Islam as per the nature of the human being and the needs of the human being. So when you say the devotion, disconnection, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed to have a little connection which is required at that time. If it is very necessary. For example, what is allowed in Itikaf? It is allowed in Itikaf if somebody comes, you can visit them. They can visit you. Or if there is some emergency, you can speak to your wife or your children. The Prophet ﷺ was in Itikaf, and the wife of the Prophet ﷺ, she came. And the Prophet ﷺ stood in the masjid, at the door of the masjid, and then he was speaking to her. And then the famous hadith came, it was in the night, and a few of the Sahaba was going. So the Prophet ﷺ said, oh, stop, stop, this is my wife, Maimuna. So they said, oh Prophet of Allah, you don't need to give any explanation. 
So the Prophet said, no, shaitan runs in the human as the blood runs in the veins. So he can create something. So it's allowed to have that sort of connection. And sometimes Prophet used to stand the masjid and he put his head at the uh, door of the masjid and Aisha ta'ala, she used to comb the Prophet That's a little bit, that's allowed. And what else is allowed is if there is a need to take shower and if there is no shower facility, you can go and you can come back. So whatever is necessary. If you need the food and nobody is there to bring you food, you can go and get your food and you come back. So those sort of things are allowed. What is not allowed is opposite to that one. Unnecessary visits. Oh, you are in a takeoff, so I'm just visiting you. And then sitting hours and hours talking around all the world. Not allowed. All, spending all the time in worldly things, thinking about it. Or linking in somehow. These days, using the mobile phones. All the time on the... Uh, WhatsApp and things like this. So the, the whole purpose of etikaf will go away. So it's, that's not allowed. And also it's not allowed for a person to... When, when you are sitting and gathering too much mazh, too much making fun and things, this is not allowed. Not allowed to go outside the masajid for unnecessary. There is no need but you are going. Not allowed. Even though there are some other work is going on, it might be good, but not allowed to involve in that one. You are devoted for ibadah, you should be in, for the, in ibadah. So these are the few things which came uh, top of my head, which is allowed and not allowed in Aitikaf. And here I would like to just highlight one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا تُبَاشِرُهُنَّ وَأَنْتُمْ عَاكِفُونَ فِي الْمَسَاجِدِ And don't you have relationship with your wife while you are in the etikaf in masajid in masajid so etikaf is the ibadah of the masjid of the masjid among all the scholars the everybody said the etikaf has to be in the masjid it cannot be anywhere else for brothers and sisters at the time of the prophet sallallahu the sisters used to do etikaf in the masjid of the prophet sallallahu sahaba had the same thing the abayin has the same thing but later on some of the fuqaha, they stopped women coming from the masjid, coming to the masjid, they stopped them. They said, okay, no, she should not come to the masjid because there is a fitna. So that's why you'll see a lot of masajid, they don't have ladies' facilities at all. So then, based on that one, they stopped there, and that stopping is against the sunnah of the Prophet Because at the time of the Prophet you know, you, when you say the fitna, what could be the worst fitna then at the time of the Prophet a lady was coming for the salat and a man had zina with her. He had a zina with her. And then the Prophet never stopped them from coming to the masjid. He never come. So this is all our creation. We should not create, we should stick to the Quran and Sunnah as we learned just now. Okay. So that was, first of all, that was not, not like proper from the Quran and Sunnah to stop them from the masjid. Allah said, don't stop the women from coming to the masjid. If they ask permission from the husband, give them the permission to go to the masjid. Based on that one, they did, etikaf should not be in the masjid for the ladies. They can do at home. Based on that wrong foundation they made. And then they said, okay, she can be in the, uh, no, etikaf is in the masjid. masjid. So many sisters asked this question, that's why I brought because the topic of etikaf, no, it is in the masjid, it is in the masjid, if there is a facility, and the etikaf is not for the ibadah, it is kifaya, some people, one person, two person stay in the, so everybody will get benefit, inshallah, from it, they will be under the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so if there is no facility, don't bother yourself to the extent that you go against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa so these were a few things about the etikaf, and uh, if there is any particular thing, you can ask, Otherwise, these were the few things I hope I, uh, I covered most of it, inshallah. Any other question or we stop here, inshallah? Yes, brother. If the time is effect or we can ask to I can ask to We'll finish. We'll take this last one. Okay, inshallah. You mentioned about people without any questions, they would be allowed to go into general for those. Yeah. 
And you know, I was expecting the fourth addition would be Salah, Saum, or, or Zaka, and things like that. But the categories are quite astonishing. It, it's two type of therapy, basically. One Rukhaya, and the one, other one is cauterization, the burning of the skin. Then the superstition. <coughs> so, so I, I, I'm not able to comprehend it. How is, why is the treatment with this? It's one which allows them to go to Jerusalem for those without questions. Mm. Very good question. To reach this level, un until and unless person does not meet his Islam and his Iman, he will not be able to reach this one. Because Tawakkul comes after Iman. And Iman is the six articles of Iman. And that Iman comes after Islam. And Islam is five pillars of Islam. So once you have the five pillars of Islam, then your Iman is completed. You, your Islam, and then you'll reach to the higher level, which is the Iman. And when you completed that one, then it comes to Tawakkul. So it's all about Tawakkul. So Tawakkul is one of the conditions. So in that one, all five pillars of Islam came, all other parts of Iman came, and then the, the, the one of them is Tawakkul after this all. And then the, the few. So both are covered in that one. Uh, inshallah, I hope. Uh, okay, inshallah. So we stop here. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah.